Hey guys, it is now update 12, week 14 of my reverse diet. And this week we're going to cover um, a, co a topic that people have been asking about, which is kind of how to know when... What is this? What, the hap what happens when you go crazy? What happens when you go crazy, you've gained a little bit of body fat and aggressively, or, or a huge amount of body fat. Now that hasn't actually happened for me uh, per se, but I think it's important to actually... Oh, uh, 300 grams, that's like a... Might as well call on the National Guard for that. <laughs> So uh, a lot of you have been asking, so I would like to go through today with you guys, um, you know, what is considered too much of an increase, um, we'll talk about percentages and what's a really good guide for that, uh, and then what are some of the strategies that you can put in place, not to want to diet again, but how can you put the brakes on this and um, continue improving your metabolism, but without, um, you know, having to diet, so. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people... Um, one of the questions I get a lot is, when, when do I know it's time to stop reversing? Mm, yeah. And that's really subjective. Um, Why is it subjective? Talk through that. <laughs> well, I mean, people, I, I have this with clients. The idea is that some people can, like you've, you've been able to, is add calories with really no weight gain hardly at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and add a lot of calories. And now you've started to gain some weight. Yeah. So some people look at that and go, oh, I hit my max, that's it. Mm -hmm. What I tend to notice is it's more of a stair-step approach that you will go be able to go up, increase through a certain range, not gain weight, and then you'll have a bump. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not linear. It's gonna be like, boom, a, a pound or 400 grams or 500 grams in one, in one week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually we were and just talking to uh, our film guy, Keith. He was just saying he gained like five pounds at one point during his, uh, his reverse diet. And it was like nothing, 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 and boom, and right. it kind of just catches up with you. And this isn't an yeah. uncommon thing. And that's, and that's my hypothesis is that there's thresholds in metabolism mm -hmm. where you maintain your weight, and when you're sitting at that upper end of that threshold, mm -hmm. I think that I think the threat, I think the the maintenance range I would say is somewhere around two to three hundred calories. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting at that upper threshold, you're pushing, 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 and all of a sudden you break through. Mm -hmm. There might be a little bit of a supercompensation effect. So so you gain some weight, but then what's likely to happen is you're going to stabilize, which mm -hmm. is what's happened this week. Yeah. So you went up about three four hundred. Grams. Yeah, last week. Right, but you didn't just keep gaining, no. you stabilized. Yeah. Um, and what will happen is you'll probably be able to start keep increasing mm -hmm. and not gain weight. Now you may have another another break point at some point. And I've also had, uh, I've had people who kind of linearly gain throughout the reverse mm -hmm. um, at a store rate. That's a little bit less common. And I've also had people who, uh, Amy Cosfan is a good example of this. She, the first time we reversed her, she gained eight pounds in the first six weeks and mm -hmm. then did not gain a single pound more yeah. through six months. So try not to judge the process too much. Um, now what I would say is if you get up to a really high calorie amount mm -hmm. where your metabolism is doing really well and then you start linearly gaining, then it's probably time to back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do when that happens? Well, uh, a lot of people talk about sitting in maintenance. Yes. I don't think you have to sit in maintenance. I think a lot of the reason why maintenance is recommended is because um, if you are continually trying to reverse, 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 and you're starting to gain more body fat than you want, maintenance can be a way where you're not gaining more body fat, but you still give your body a chance to stay in that higher calorie range and quote unquote yeah. lock in those changes. Yeah, so I think it's kind of, you find yourself in this new set point because when you're increasing every week, week after week, uh, it's actually difficult to know, okay, what is actually going to um, maintain my weight. So that's kind of the approach that we took last week with um, my reverse. And um, it'll be interesting to show you the uh, my weigh-ins this week and my calorie intakes. And kind of, you see things bouncing all over the place a little bit, which is not normal for me. Yeah, we had a um, hectic week. We have had a lot going on, a lot of different... Um, Very little sleep. Little sleep probably high stress um, and also changes to dietary intake, so lots of different foods. Again, just we have not had a kitchen. Um, As you can tell, we're actually in a different place, so we've moved into a new house. Yeah. Um, new <laughs> office can be much better for us, mm -hmm. um, but obviously moving is stressful. Mm -hmm. We also have my kids, yes. and uh, both of them, uh, Liv was teething, and Robert had a little cold there. They're mostly really good, actually, but Liv was up during the night, so we were <laughs> we were running on low sleep, a lot of stress. We had a couple extra uh, bodies in the bed this weekend. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, you know, that just, that, that can throw things for a loop. And then, obviously, the move itself is stressful. Mm. Uh, and then we don't, at the new house here, we don't have a kitchen yet because it's being remodeled. 
So that obviously influences your dietary choices mm -hmm. and what you're taking in. Yeah. Probably more processed foods than you normally would. Yeah, things with more sodium, <laughs> you know, more electrolytes. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that uh, strategies I put in place uh, to avoid the bloating because I have had uh, multiple cases where people are either in a reverse diet or even in a muscle gain phase, and you know, the first um, conclusion that people will typically draw is, "Oh, I'm really bloated. I'm." feeling super full, I'm looking really full, and there are a couple of ways um, that you can kind of test this out to make sure that it's not actually just body fat. Um, so we'll... You seem to be pretty convinced that it was all 100% body fat. No, I ago. say this, I say <laughs> it, but I'm not actually serious. I kind of know what's going on. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have a look at much. my numbers and uh, we'll kind of talk through what's happening and I'm going to give you some quick tips on how to reduce your GI uh, discomfort um, if you're going through a reverse diet and you're starting to feel a little bit round through your stomach. So, yes. <laughs> Alright, so uh, there's been a couple of no weigh-in days that you can see here, so I missed uh, my Thursday, but overall, um, I actually was heaviest at the beginning of the week um, at 67, I've dropped back down here to 66.9, at my lowest on uh, Friday at 66.4, um, and then I've kind of trended back up towards over the weekend, but that's probably due to the fact that I was a little bit more compliant to my calories. So. Um, I think the key things to have a look at here are my compliance to calories. So I was only 94% compliant now. If 95. That was 95, whatever. <laughs> um, which is actually pretty poor, to be honest. Like when you're thinking about calories, that's a good 100 calories below uh, what I should be. So it's about 110 calories under my target. Um, my compliance to protein uh, unusually was very low. But again, I think a lot of this comes down to uh, we didn't have any foods in our house. We were trying to pack. We kind of had everything put away. So there wasn't really a lot of selection. So that's probably why that was down this week. And then uh, carbs and fats was down. But I am going to say, um, caveat to this, I did have alcohol. Now this, um, the way that I've got this calculated doesn't include the alcohol column. So that's probably closer to being accurate. So... Overall, I'm still a little bit down um, on calories and my weight is kind of staying around that 67 kilo mark. So I think that being said... But even before that, your weigh-ins were 66.7, 66.9. Yeah. You were, like, I know seeing a new uh, digit uh, probably activates your uh, worry. <laughs> yeah. um, but like 67.0 is your average this week. Reality, that's only 100, ki 100 grams, 100 kilos, 100 grams more than you were a few weeks back when you were very happy with how things are going. Yeah. And I think also, like, looking at my ratios of, like, macronutrients, like, my protein. You're also all over the place. I'm, yeah, I really did a terrible job this week. Like, if I was my client, well, but, I'd be getting a slap on the wrist. <laughs> no, but, I mean, you were moving. You had a lot of stuff going on. I know. Like, I, know. I, and I, I told you this a couple of days ago. I'm like, I'm not sure, but I was just kind of planning for this week to be a shit show and mm -hmm. accepting that it was going to be a shit show. I think you have, uh, Holly is a little bit more, would you say, like you like to have control over stuff in your life or mm -hmm. feel like everything's, and when things are in transition, it's difficult for you. Yeah. And so I would say, but you know, the good thing is like you didn't use food as a comfort no. and go and go crazy with that. Well, I think... If I had food as a comfort, it probably would have been this week, to mm. be honest, but we didn't, which is good. So having that barrier to, to being able to, you know, use that as a coping uh, strategy is, um, you know, it worked very well <laughs> this weekend. So, um, so you know, I think, uh, you know, based on this data, you know, we're going to be traveling for the next uh, 36 hours or so. Uh, we're filming this right before we get on a plane for Australia. Yeah. Um, I, I would say probably do a small increase, but don't have it take effect until you know we okay. actually land. A, a small increase from my set targets, or do we want to do a small increase from what I actually consumed this past week? Because well, you actually the week before you hit those set targets, right? Yeah, I was about one hundred percent. I would just say I just inched up incrementally five grams of carbs and. Yeah. Grammar to a fat. Um, I would actually like to start when I get on the ground. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, like, you know, maybe go a little bit lower uh, calorie 
I'm while gonna, you're traveling. I think I'm going to be um, quite conservative on the mm -hmm. travels because I know a lot of my daily calorie expenditure, and a lot of people are like this, um, it comes from their physical activities. So um, my NEAT is probably not as a uh, greater percentage of what my calorie spend is for some other people. A lot of my well, calorie burn is from training, so. Well, then I would say, you know, on your off days, uh, you don't ever really have an off day when you're Normally home. I don't have off days. I'll have a recovery day and I'll do a walk or something, but um, I think. But I, I, you know, I tell my clients usually 20 to 30% reduction in carbohydrate and fat on day you're completely off. Yeah, and I would be sedentary, so I'm gonna go 20. I'm not gonna go 30, I think that's a bit crazy. Uh, 225 times, mm, let's take off 67. That was 30%. Oh, was it? Sorry. Mm. I was listening to you. 225 times 0.8 would be 20% reduction. 180. Okay, so 180 for two days, so I'll, I'll do Well, that. you're, you're going to be traveling for 36 hours, mm -hmm. basically. So this turns us, because when we go to Australia, it's a 14 hour difference. It actually turns it into basically a 38 hour day. Yeah. Um, so usually what I do is 36, so it's basically a day and a half. So I'm going to do have. two days on low macros and then I'm going to give myself a high day as well. I'm going to come over here and... So this is a good, when, when people, when you travel overseas, I get a lot of clients who ask this, how do I do this? You know, so we're going to, we're leaving on a Tuesday, we're going to land on a Thursday morning. So what I typically do, since it's going to be uh, an extra 12 hours ahead, I add 12 hours to the 24 hours I usually have. That's 36 hours. So it's basically a day and a half. So I take my daily macros and I times them by, uh, I, I increase them by 50% and I use that amount for the entire trip. So uh, right now my rest day macros are 300 grams of carbs, 100 grams of fat, 250 grams of protein. So I'll go uh, 375 protein, uh, 450 grams of carbs, and 150 grams of fat for my entire travel duration uh, from this morning until we land in Australia. And then it will be a new day. I'm just playing around with my table right now. Because it's so... So basically, but you could do that like if you flew to Europe and it's an eight hour flight and you're, you know, you're, you're landing, you can figure out, okay, where, where am I landing at? How do I get myself back to zero? Because if you're gonna travel all the way to Australia and you're only using one day, when in reality it's gonna be 36 hours until you restart, because we land at 7 a.m. Um, that's going to be really tough, and that's actually going to be a couple more deficit. So guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just putting in the fact that I've got uh, two low days and five high days, and I'm just working out my average calories right now. Um, so that's going to be equals this table divided by 4.1. Cool, so 2091, what is my previous week? 25. 2150. Oh, so I'm actually still down. But but you were doing more Yeah, that's true. Okay. This is where having a coach really comes in handy because if you're doing this yourself, a lot of times it's difficult to, you know, figure out. Okay, what do I take away from if I'm not doing as much activity? Those sorts of things. And this is where you know a coach can be helpful to kind of walk you through this sort of stuff. Yeah. So to summarize this, uh, basically, uh, even though last week's calories were a little bit higher. Um, because I'm taking two days off, I'm reducing my macros by 20%. I'm taking the lower end of that range just because I am trying to improve my metabolism. Um, so I want to test it a little bit. Um, and then I'm taking five days where I've taken my macros back up a little bit higher than previous week. So I'm doing a 230 day and 72 grams of fats. So those are higher than what I've previously been, but on average it works out to be just a little bit lower. And keep in mind, you're going to be traveling too, so there's going to be a different scale. Yes. You know, there's going to be different stuff. So make sure when you're integrating that data that you always take it with a grain of salt, you know. And, and um, you know, if we get there and it says, oh, you're 68 or you're 66, mm -hmm. I would probably just say, let's see what the week holds. Uh, I probably okay. don't want to get on the scales, but I know I need to. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, we really appreciate your support. Uh, if you have any specific questions that you'd like to know about your own reverse diet, um, please drop a comment in or contact us to either of our emails. Lane, what's your email? Lane at biolane.com. Pretty simple. Mine's hb at biolane.com. Uh, we have for Americans, that's hb. Oh, what did I say? No, it's just you pronounce it early. Oh yeah. HB. Well, I'm Australian. I'm trying not to lose. You were on the phone yesterday, and you were trying to explain. Oh, to somebody. Z. And Z the guy's like, "What's that?" 
<laughs> no, you said Zed. Oh, okay. And uh, the guys, the, yeah, they don't understand. Mm. So, okay. but the perils of being in Australia and America. So yes, if you would like to contact us for anything uh, coaching, we still have a couple of one-on-one -on -one spaces available. However, we are Very literally true. about to leave for Australia today for our tour. Yep. So usually they fill out pretty quickly after this. Mm. So uh, jump on board uh, and hit us up if. And you if you haven't, up. if you're in Australia, you haven't signed up for our tour yet. Uh, make sure you go to bylane.com, uh, search Australia in the search bar and they'll come up and uh, you can come check us out on tour, learn from us directly. Uh, we're pretty much almost sold out in Brisbane. There are a couple spots available. Sydney, we have a few more spots, mm -hmm. uh, especially at the camp. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. So that is this Friday evening, all mm -hmm. day Saturday in yeah. Sydney, and then on Sunday we'll be in Brisbane in the yeah. afternoon. So. And then the weekend after that, I'll be in Melbourne for the Ultimate Evidence-Based Conference, along with a bunch of other huge names like Brick and Tris, uh, Eric Helms, Mike Alan Israel. Argon, <laughs> Mike Israel, Sophie Lee, some yeah, really great, great James Krieger, really great lineup of people. So you don't want to miss out on, on that opportunity. If you're in Melbourne, go sign up for that. Um, and yeah, we're really looking forward to it. If you uh, want to know more about how we base some of our calculations, you can check out my uh, contest prep uh, book. Mm -hmm. But it's not just for contest prep, it's for anybody who wants to learn how to set up a fat loss diet and execute that diet. Um, and you can get that at contestprepbook.com. Thank you. In the trenches, every day, cause I stay on my grind. If they hate, they let them make, cause they won't stop my shine. See me running to that money, I just want what's mine. No, I don't waste no time. No, I don't waste no time. Whoa, 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 I don't waste no time. Whoa, 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 I don't waste no time. See me running to that money, I just want what's mine. I don't waste no time. No, I don't time